going on guys i want to kill boomer week with oprah winfrey we all know who she is y'all know her y'all love her i think oprah has done worse for the actuality of black women giving them hope without giving them skill sets than anybody else um that I could think of I don't like Oprah for, for a myriad of reasons uh, I don't like Oprah because Oprah doesn't like me I don't think y'all realize um, how as I came into this game like I was a kid rapping hanging out with all the hip hop artists of, of my time like Twister and Juice and Rhyme Fest and um uh just, just a bunch of them, man. Um, and a lot of them became talented. Billy Wamstad, shout out to, shout out to Upski uh, at Double XL Magazine, TA Money, uh, Terry Moore. And during the course while I'm hanging out in this, this new energy, this hip hop energy, there's this chubby chick from Mississippi that moved to Chicago, and all she says is how she hates rap. She hates rappers. She, she hates the, the genre, the culture. She hates everything that, that I'm embracing at that time. So I was like, you know what? Open up for me. And I just let it be what it is. Um. Then she started not only going against rappers, then she started a book club. So by now I'm writing books. And then I'm realizing she's not bringing black male authors on her show. So really, she's saying screw black men all the way around the board. And she's really worshiping women and really middle class white women at some point because she didn't start off like that. She started off as a jock shock, you know, bringing in single moms and clansmen and things like that. But it was wild in the 80s, man. Geraldo, Donnie Hugh. It was banana shows. Jenny Jones. Shout out to Jenny Jones. Um, And... You know, 30 years later, 40 years later almost, um, we get to see the results of this. So, I don't want to talk about Oprah too much, even though there's a lot to talk about with Oprah, but I'm going to breeze through it. That's why we just a pre-record. And I really want to get into She-Hulk being the, the epitome of everything that we talked about during Boomer Week, about... Um, Blacks need the assistance of whites. Uh, women shouldn't have to be submissive to their man. That they own people. Uh, a woman shouldn't be identified by the accomplishments of a man. All type of bullshit that the colored say to keep you enslaved because they hate you. Um, and I want to run through this real quick. So this is Oprah. You know Oprah's story. Not gonna go through it. I want to show you what has happened to this whole Oprah empire since the market opened up and how this affects the type of women you want to date okay so at some point come in for a minute I wasn't going to come on but I'm going to come in at some point Oprah realized that nothing works out for you if you deal with black women um, directly you have to employ them you can't put them in a position of power and if you look at Oprah shows then you only see one black girl on any of the shows that Oprah really does and has their own their own production power and that's Tamara Hall and shout out to Tamara Hall man Tamara Hall was in Chicago for a minute uh, just as she was going through a tour in life and I had a, a huge crush on Tamara Hall and I remember my boy Brian invited me to a Beyonce concert about 10-15 years ago 
and he invited me to a Beyonce concert. I was like, man, I don't want to see no Beyonce. He was going with his wife. He had an extra ticket. And um, he came back the next day like, yo, bro, my wife, cousin, Tamron Hall, you would have been sitting next to Tamron Hall. You know you love Tamron Hall. I love Tamron Hall more than I love Beyonce. So, shout out to Tamron Hall, even though she married that white man and had them beige baby. Shout out to Tamron Hall for being one that lasts. You know you don't see Ayana, um, the Ayana show here. You see Ellen, Ellen DeGeneres. You see Dr. Oz. You see Dr. Phil. You see the Nate Berkus show, which I just found out about today. You see Rachel Ray. I love me some Rachel Ray, too. And you love, you see Tamron Hall. Tamron Hall is the only black woman who gets to produce her own show that that Oprah rocks with. Every other, he, she's tried with Gail. She's tried with uh, Ayana. She's tried with other black women and never works out because gr- black girls don't know shit. They just do shit. And they, they live comparatively. So they think they can do shit because Oprah do shit and Oprah gonna handle it for them and give them all the credit. The same way they treat men. But it didn't work out like that because Oprah bought a guap. Anyway, but everything that Oprah was really trying to do was falling off. She does have shows with other women, of course. She has sitcoms, cooking shows, all type of things. But she produces those shows and she gives them a salary. They're not allowed to, to control their own content. Um, They don't get a, a, a say on the budget or anything like that. She, she handles it as she should. So these are shows, when you look at like black women own the conversation, these are shows just to to basically representation these are representation shows to show the faces of of black people and gays because you can't tell me carlos king ain't gay but i I could be wrong if if i'm wrong i apologize but i think he's gay you know so the women gays and felons can have a place to be represented but the only shows that that people have their own opportunity to produce are these shows right here ellen dr and you only see one one black girl and Tamara Hall has been in the news she's been in the news game for 20 25 years so she she understands the business um Oprah tried to do the magazine when she tried to branch out old magazine is over um apparently being on the cover of every magazine worked out for her until it didn't and Oprah set up a school hold on wrong one Oprah set up a school and the school consistently has sex scandals uh, plumbing uh, plumbing problems and honestly she had to go to, to South Africa to set up the school because she tried in Milwaukee initially and it was such a failure because of the black women that they had administrating it then I want to say this again Black women don't know shit. They just do shit. They really want to be slaves. They just want to rebrand it, another title, because they really, they're not doing well in life. And and I and I want to prove that point by showing you this: the median income of black American black women from the age of sixteen to twenty four is $552 weekly up to the age of 24 from 25 to 54 years old the average median income is $777 weekly which is about $15 an hour right I know that one I've had $15 an hour jobs um I'm assuming it's about $11, $12 an hour because $10 an hour would be $400 a week so I'm assuming you know it's about $12 and this is 15 15 50. so they keep saying that they, these high earners but the result the, the statistics say that's a lie I also want to show you that for the first time um oh, we ain't going there yet the median age of black people right before the pandemic in 2020, 2019 uh the median age was 32 years old so you're living in a, a population where people are dying younger because you can't live on flaming hot Cheetos. Um, and roughly 30% of the black population was before the age of 20. Think about that. Over a third, 
This is crazy. Over 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 a third, 35% were 22 years or younger. That's crazy. 30% are under 20. 35. So that's an extra whole 5% in those couple years. Let me tell you something. These generation X bitches are being single mothers at a rapid rate. They killing babies and having babies at the same clip. They double breasted, my nigga. Two gun Tony. These women are out here just randomly, arbitrarily dropping them off, man, like the stork. You see this, bro. Because 53% of black men don't even have kids. Then you got the man that's married. That's 32% of black men. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of black men have married Maria's. Even though Keisha keep worrying about Becky. We marrying Maria's at a rapid rate. And from the ones who are single fathers. Who have one kid and pay their child support. Like, yo, I hate my baby mama. There's very few black men. Less than 4% of black men, well, around 4%, 4 to 6% of black men have kids by three or more women, while 64% of black women have kids by three or more men. So these chicks are sleeping with the same four dudes and reproducing the earth, my G. And that's fine, but just understand that they're, they're having pregnancies for poverty because they need the baby to get a free house. Because they don't know stuff. They just do stuff. They are out here lost. And bro, they are in a bad shape, bro. They look like my head did not went to bed without a do-rag. They look scruffy out here in the real world. Don't listen to these chicks. They live a filter lifestyle. They are doing bad out here. And you can buy you a girl for minimum wage. Her life would be better with you. Give her one third. One eighth. Giving her one eighth of what she would earn in the workplace and letting her sleep on your couch, then her life will be trying to deal with her life alone. Man, I'll show y'all secretary, man. Y'all gonna get these secretaries. Anyway, so with all that being said, this is the legacy of Oprah. Of Oprah encouraging women that they don't need a man, they should go get a career, and all that. And all that blends down to, because I didn't really want to talk about Oprah like that. All that blends down to, um, she-Hulk. We're going to check out the She-Hulk trailer. I'm going to break it down. I'm going to do a quick review on it. And I'm going to tell you how this relates to the cat lady lifestyle that Oprah Winfrey has been promoting upon these feminists and these young black girls for the past almost 40 years. So let's check it out. Being a superhero... Is a trial by fire. Who's gonna protect the world if not people like you? I'm Jennifer Walters. I'm a lawyer. I have great friends. Can we get some shots, please? It's an emergency. A uh, demanding job. We just started a superhuman law division, and I want. Pause. Okay, I want you to realize a couple of things real quick. So, on this trailer, She's talking about she has great friends. She had one friend. And, and and all you need in this world is one friend. I just don't know why she pluralized it. That was crazy. Um, and she's supposed to be a superhero. People know who she is. And they want to create a law department because she's supposed to be a lawyer. We're going to get into that in a minute. I want to I wanna take the law part because the law part is the Oprah. The Oprah initiative. But there's something else that's about to happen, which is the Amos Wilson slash uh, Dr. Claude Anderson angle that we talked about earlier this week. I want you to be the face of it. And a frustrating family. Because we didn't ask for this, but you still got to deal with it. Okay, so check this out. Here's my issue with this. Trans- this is kind of funny. But here's my issue. A couple of things. Number one, in order for a female to be uh, relevant, she needs the cosign of a male. They keep telling you that they don't need no man, but time after time after time, they show that women are basically irrelevant unless they are cosigned by a man. For the black guys who's seeing this, the reason that you feel invisible is because you give, you empower, which means you give your power to 
You empower toddlers at such an early age and then beg her for power back. Ask her for permission to use the power that you gave her. Everybody else, they, they do it later. So you see situations like this. Another problem I have with this, though, this is my biggest problem. And this is just the nerd in me. Why is there a Professor Banner? If he's calm, shouldn't he be Bruce Banner talking to his cousin? Shouldn't both of them be be just regular people? Why is he still... This is how they try to steal the star power. There's also an article, by the way... Oh, I'll talk about that later. Let's check this out. Transformations are triggered by anger and fear. Those are like the baseline of any woman just existing. Shout out to her, though. Let me take that back. He said, man, your powers are... Are, are triggered by anger and fear. And she said, that's pretty much the existence of every woman. And that's facts. That's kind of funny, though. I ain't going to front. All right, all right. That's kind of funny. I ain't going to front. But that is, the, that is the base of the Gamma Powers. Anger and fear turns Bruce Banner into the Incredible Hulk. And she like, shit, anger and fear, that's, that's every minute every day for a woman. That's hilarious. And it's also true. I'm about to bring that back, though. That's hilarious. You still got to deal with it. Your transformations are triggered by anger and fear. Those are like the baseline of any woman just existing. Oh. Bruce, how do you feel like if I don't transform, I'm going to die? Yes, yes, yes. No, no. Okay, so here's my issue with that. Even though it's funny, that is the Incredible Hulk. That man has fought Thor. That man is for Galactus. Galactus, my G. There is no way in the world that the Incredible Hulk would be afraid of a scared or angry woman. This is how they psycholog psychologically program you to say even the most swole, omnipotent, no upper limit, omega powered superhero like the Incredible Hulk is scared of a girl. Quit being scared of girls. It was funny, but the subliminal messaging is, is wow. I just want to be a normal, anonymous lawyer. Can you tell us where She-Hulk is? Jen, you're a story now. Girl, your ass looks crazy right now. Shout out to white girls wanting asses. Shout out to that. You could be an Avenger. Oh, I'm not a superhero. That is for billionaires and narcissists and adult orphans for some reason. Anything more depressing than hold on, that's for y'all tender bros. This is y'all tender bros. This is why your hot your lives are so empty, bro. They say 64% more men than women on Tinder. Tinder isn't real life, but yo, this is this is this is what they do, bro. This is how they figure out they're gonna sleep with you in two minutes using a thumb, bro. This is not real, bro. Stay offline, man. Hunt in the bright, hunt in the wild, bro. This is this is funny, but. Is there anything more depressing than dating in your 30s? Yeah, this is the best date I've had in a while. Oh. Should we split some fries? Let's get those to go. Shout out to him for being cheap and wanting to split some french fries. But this right here is some real aggressive uh, buster shit. Like, yo, french fries to go. Bro, never. I promise you, bro. I promise you. If a girl pick me up and try to carry me to the bathroom, to the bedroom, but we fighting, man. We fighting. Let me show you something about how they try to empower these toddlers, though, to think that they could be She-Hulk, like they could really be a lawyer. I'm just going off the lawyer part. Another reason, even though the, the, the Hulk is, the original Hulk, by the way, the original TV Hulk was Lee Haney. Google him. He was Mr. Olympian, black guy. They never mention him. The third season, they got Lou Ferrigno. Mention him all the time. Never mention Lee Haley. Lee Haley was really Arnold Schwarzenegger before Arnold Schwarzenegger, but he was black, and they black balled him. It was really messed up. Anyway, but before you get these colored girls, hope, let's look at how many female lawyers it is. Because I hear y'all on uh, all type of shows about child sport, like, get you a female lawyer. Man, you better not get you no motherfucker. But check this out. The most common ethnicity of trial lawyers. We're just talking trial lawyers. 
are white, 79%, followed by Hispanic or Latino at 7%, and Asian at 6%. 79 plus 6 is 85, 85 plus 7 is 92. So 92% of trial lawyers, which is what you think about when you think law, are non-black. So that leaves 8% for the colors, right? So at most eight percent of lawyers can be black. I got I got two black I got two black cousins. I mean I got two cousins that's, that's lawyers. Shout out to Michael and Harry. Um, so there are black lawyers, but they don't do trial. They work at TV stations and things like that. Um, lawyers by gender. There's twenty nine percent of lawyers that are female. Even if you say that black women are most educated, whatever you want to say. Out that 8% that could be lawyers, another 29% of that 8%. So what's that, like, two? Like, women don't do, like, real jobs. Anyway, um, this is something I found very interesting, though, when I was looking it up. There was a point in this, and they, they were talking about the retention of female lawyers. Yeah. That I found... That I found very, very, um, very interesting. Hold on, I pass it up. You know what, guys? I think I actually clicked it. Oh, man, I took it off. Okay, so since I messed up and I and I and I took off that tab, I will tell you what it said. It said that male and female lawyers have um, have similar satisfaction ratings for for working, although less women want to be lawyers and more women uh, quit law during their JL than male lawyers, which doesn't say that male lawyers don't, right? It simply means that more women do. So, if you guys saw the movie with uh, Adam Sandler, when he adopted the boy, when he found the kid, and he was working at a toll booth on the on the on the expressway, and everybody was like, "But bro, all you gotta do is pass the bar." Like he had already gone through law school, he just didn't pass the bar so he could practice. Most women do that. Most women go to school because they like going to school, but then when they get close to the time they actually have to work and perform, they be like, yo, I just work at a hotel. So they got all this legal knowledge. They sound smart. They can tell you shit, but they, they're not lawyers and they don't go back to get their bar. Most most of them quit before the bar, before they even have to take their bar. Um, And the second thing that they were talking about is women who become lawyers if they're seasoned then they're good but they're talking about poor work experiences and and poor work conditions because they're women not because they're an intern not because they're you know what I'm saying trying to work their way up the ladder not that men don't go through the same thing like he don't put his his food in the same refrigerator just because they're women so I need you guys to understand that this whole Oprah empowerment thing, her being the face of it, because for some reason y'all only listen to women. For her being the face of it, I need you to, I need to show you guys this. This is her legacy. Part of her legacy is telling women they can be whatever they want to be, which they can, and then realizing they don't want to be shit because they don't know shit. They just do shit. Um, the last thing I want to show you, we're gonna bring it right back to Oprah. The last thing I want to show you guys is. There's a high school in New Jersey that opens up on Friday nights to give their kids something to do. And this was an Oprah-related story because Oprah gave them some money, and it's a real quick clip. But here's the issue. The issue is... Watch this. Let's, let's play it out. Brought you the story of a New Jersey school principal who opened Westside High School on Friday nights to give his students a place to go. 
The Lights On program provides children with warm meals, a place to let loose, and even a room to do their laundry. Principal Cook believes in order to improve test scores, we have to address basic needs. His heroic efforts inspired Oprah Winfrey, who on Friday surprised Cook and nearly 400 of his students with the funds to keep the program going. Here is a look at her visit. I promise a guy, Oprah Winfrey looks just like my childhood next door neighbor. I'm gonna do a podcast with her too. She t- she like telling the story when I threw threw a Keisha outside naked, but just like her. Yeah. My homegirl work at a bank. She don't get paid no money. Guys, let me just say this real quick. She gave that program a half a million dollars, man. And the reason that there's 400 kids in the program, half a million dollars, what's that, $12,000 per kid? She's basically raising somebody else's kid. The fact that the principal, and, and men are awesome, I understand why he did it, but he shouldn't have done it. The reason that he set up a public school and made it a proxy boarding school just so the kids can have somewhere to eat and do laundry and do homework is another case of women can't do shit right these these toddlers should not be parents bro i swear to god they shouldn't if if you're in a position where you can't wash up wash your kids clothes i keep telling you they don't want to do nothing bro these toddlers don't want to do nothing they don't want to feed their kids they don't want to do the laundry. They don't want to help with homework. They don't want to find out who their kids' friends are. These toddlers don't want to do nothing. To the point that when when a, a strange man has to stand up, and shout out to that principal, even though I think it's misplaced, but shout out to that principal. When, when a man has to stand up and say, man, these are basic needs that children have to have service, that it becomes a national news story to the point that Oprah comes through to quote unquote keep the lights on because these whores are horrible bro and all she's doing is is paying back the money that that she owes the game for making these women feel like they can make it in life without without husbands and fathers man it's only gonna get worse until you try a buck it's only going to get worse. You travel. You can go your own way. You can pass for a broad. But please believe, bro, that this, this, the American culture tra- uh, travels quicker than you can travel. So within the next few years, wherever you are, it's going to be their version of where you just left. You got to take a stand, man. I'm like, Gandalf, man. Thou shalt not pass, bro. This is, it is getting ridiculous, man. So shout out to Oprah for trying to clean up our own mess. Anyway. Love each other as you love yourself. Feed the pack. I'll be on a little bit later to do a live about something I actually care about. I just wanted to finish up Boomer Week, man. These boomers are horrible. <sighs> Let's get it, guys. Dirty folks. Dirty folks. Dirty folks. No shit. No shit. Toddler tales are crazy stories that can only happen to me. Each tale is endorsed by Toddlerology and the Marry Your Secretary courses. In a world where toddlers are only loyal to her employer, learn the skills needed to train your toddler to work at your relationship like she works at her job. There's courses for every level of your relationship status, including polygamy. Need support? Join scheduled study groups with other Toddlerology members. Click the link below. And now, back to today's story. 